on it. So we had some suggestion regarding this issue, and we are in the constant contact with the President Trump and with President Rouhani and to so that Iranian party they stuck to the conditions according to the Iranian accord so we're going to discuss Ukraine we're going to discuss Ukrainian crisis about uh, the election about the choices that were made by President Zelensky recently regarding the position that he took recently I know that uh, Mr. Putin had a conversation with him, a number of conversations in the few last days, so we will be able to discuss all that. We will be able to prepare for the future meetings. And with Mr. Zelensky and Mr. Putin and Ms. Merkel, we will try to, to work in the Normandy format in a few weeks. So we also are going to discuss the situation in Syria, where a lot of work has been done hand in hand in the recent months, for example, in St. Petersburg and Istanbul, we've started a number of humanitarian missions, we've developed new initiatives, and today we are really concerned about what is happening in Idlib, because population of Idlib are living under constant bombardments, the civilians, children are dying, and I think that the situation is really extreme and there is so we need to stick uh, to the ceasefire uh, decision that we agreed upon in Sochi, so we need the parties to fulfill this agreement, so we are going to develop some constitutional and diplomatic steps and uh, time frames so that these agreements were followed. Also, we did a lot of work to mobilize all the parties, all the players, and we will try to achieve a stability and to reconstruct uh, the situation and uh, to solve the crisis in Syria. So that's what we're going to discuss later today, since in France in a few days we're going to hold the G7 summit where we are going to discuss these issues as well. So that's why I wanted to discuss these matters with Mr. Putin before this summit takes place. And we have a number of topics to discuss. And of course, uh, we're talking about our security, about disarmament. There were some decisions regarding the INF Treaty, and now we need to build the future of the European safety and security. So I hope we will have a chance to speak thoroughly about these topics too. Also, we are going to talk about the climatic, climatic changes. I know that recently in Russia a very important decision was made about ratifying the Paris Treaty. It's an important step on behalf of Russia supporting the Paris Agenda. It's a very important step. So I'd like also to mention the awful fires that took place in Siberia this summer. So to offer my condolences and the climatic agenda. It's an important issue. It's an urgent issue for today. And I would like to say that the current measures that multilateral approach is being attacked from all the sides and we need to think how can we rebuild this world in this way of things. We need to find new mechanisms of cooperation, new mechanisms that will be useful for all of us and in this case, in this context, our bilateral relations and relations between Russia and EU are of a key importance. I think about everything that happened in the last decade, about what made us stand further away from each other. I know that Russia is a European country, and I really believe it uh, with all my heart. And we believe in this Europe, from Lisbon to Vladivostok. As one great Russian writer said, Dostoevsky, so the best I can remember, Russians have this specific feature about them. It was the most Russian, when it was the most European, so we really 
need to make Russian citizens to be uh, to become united with the European citizens. So I believe in this unified concept. So we really need to reconsider, rebuild the architecture of mutual trust between Russia and EU. And France is going to play its role in this protest. You know that we have new uh, threats that we all face. Or we can speak about the nuclear sphere or about cyber uh, threats. So we need to work on this agenda and we need to come up with the ways to resolve these conflicts together. And since Russia is a European country, it has uh, its place, full-fledged place within European family. That's why France did all it could so to bring Russia back to the Council of Europe and since France is uh, the chairman of the board of the Council of Europe, we used this chance and we took uh, the necessary measures to make it happen. And since Council of Europe, uh, it's very important thing for Council of Europe, so they really stick to the freedom, to the liberties, to the civil liberties, freedom of speech. And we also need uh, to see that all this freedom and liberties were given to, uh, on the territory of Russia. Since Russia is a European country, I believe that I believe that presence of Mr. Putin here in Bregenson today is a very important thing and I really believe that we are going to have few hours together. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, dear Vladimir, for coming to Bregenson here today. Thank you for having the time to come here and I'm really grateful. On my behalf, I would like to thank you for the invitation to visit this wonderful place. Uh, this is a wonderful residence. We uh, had a look uh, from a helicopter. We saw that this uh, area of France uh, is uh, really beautiful. And you see how nice Mr. Macron is. Uh, our delegation is in the shade uh, and his delegation is in the sun. So I'll try to be brief, uh, not to overexpose them to the sun. Again, we will focus uh, on our bilateral ties. Thanks to uh, the French president's initiative, Apart from uh, traditional uh, areas of cooperation, we uh, pursue uh, uh, to dialogue between civil societies. Uh, our trade is going up. There's been a uh, drop uh, in uh, the first six months, but there are objective reasons. Uh, but overall, the balance of trade uh, is evening out. Total investment of Russian companies into the French economy total more than three billion US dollars. While French investment is 17 billion US dollars. About 500 companies operate uh, in the Russian market. I've met uh, French uh, CEOs. We, several months ago, we had uh, such a meeting in Moscow. Now, on the international agenda, I think we will discuss uh, international affairs, and the French president uh, mentioned some of the issues. And there are indeed certain issues, and it was not Russia that withdrew unilater unilaterally from the ABM and from the INF treaties. Currently, we are discussing an extension to the New START treaty. So far, we don't see any initiatives on the part of our U.S. counterparts, while our offers are on the table. We're also concerned with uh, the uh, ban on uh, t nuclear tests. We are concerned uh, with the possible mit militarization of uh, space and uh, we will talk about that in detail. We need to know what is the position of France 
I would like to remind you on the INF Treaty, as I said earlier, and I would like to reiterate it once again here in France, we will take up a commitment, a unilateral commitment. If the U.S. does go ahead, does go ahead with these plans, then we will deploy them too. But uh, unless the U.S. deploys them, these uh, missiles in a particular region, we will not deploy our missiles there too. So far, we have not heard any response to it. It seems that uh, we are being ignored. But I think the Europeans are interested uh, in uh, having this dialogue, in having that response from the U.S. We'll also discuss regional conflicts. We'll talk about uh, the Ukraine crisis. I'll update uh, the French president on my latest contacts uh, with uh, the newly elected uh, president of Ukraine. There are some things that we can discuss. There are things which, uh, which uh, inspire a cautious optimism. We'll talk about Syria. Before signing the agreement in Sochi, and the pres French president mentioned that, on uh, demilitarization of some of the Idlib zone, 50% of the territory was controlled by terrorists. Right now, 90% of the territory is controlled by terrorists. So we're seeing continuous raids, and some of the militants are uh, relocated to other regions of the world. And this is extremely dangerous. There have been several attempts to attack our Khmeimim air base in Syria from the Idlib zone. This is why we support uh, the efforts by the Syrian army to uh, hold uh, local uh, offensives uh, against terrorists. Terrorists should not feel that they are in a safe haven there. As we said, we'll continue working against terrorists. Another important uh, issue is Libya. National reconciliation, that's our goal. And I would like to know what is the position of France uh, on that, so that we can better coordinate our efforts. We appreciate uh, France's uh, position on uh, Russia's uh, return to the Council of Europe, to PACE, and uh, we hope that this will help to uh, build uh, normal uh, relations uh, on in Europe, and we rely on France's support uh, when uh, dealing with the EU authorities, uh, with Brussels. This is our agenda in brief, and finally, we'll also talk about uh, humanitarian cooperation. Human to human contacts, uh, Mr. Macron mentioned that earlier. We do have uh, very close contacts. Next year, we want to host several events in uh, France, the so called Moscow Seasons, 270 activities in all major cities uh, of France. I hope this will be very insightful for the French audience and for the Russian performance. This will be yet another step to building a full-fledged uh, relationship between our two countries. Thank you very much, Vladimir. I think we will answer a couple of questions from each part. Mr. Macron, you have just said that during this summit you may be able to agree on the conditions on having the summit in the Normandy way with four uh, country leaders. And you have mentioned a number of times to have a summit like this, you need the certain preconditions. Otherwise, this meeting will have no use. So, do you already have these preconditions fulfilled? And what are these preconditions from your point of view? Yeah. Of course, we're going to discuss this as well, and there is a new factor now. What I mean is, uh, the election of Mr. Zelensky as the president, his stance since he has been elected, 
And we also should mention that on the landscape's behalf, there are a lot of uh, brave steps and efforts uh, within this conflict that has lasted for five years already and that brought uh, the civilian population to the fact that they are living in awful conditions. And we also need to remember the regional role of Russia. And Mr. Zelensky uh, took a number of the short-term measures. We're going to discuss this with Mr. Putin. We will share our opinions. We will share our analysis of the situation. I hope that in the coming hours, days and months, we're going to have a new dynamics. And, uh, that would be what would allow us to discuss things and to move forward. Of course, there is certain issues, uh, security, safety issues. So I expressed my condolences to Mr. Zelensky regarding uh, the death of the people who lost their life as the result of the incident on 4th of August in Ukraine. And we are going to talk about this in a few hours. And I agree with you, we should have this summit. We should make it happen in the Norman form, Normandy form. And only if we could achieve real results, not just to meet for the sake of meeting. And we're going to discuss all those steps that we can take, that each side can take. In a few days, we're going to have the meeting between our diplomatic advisors so that we could prepare for the Normandy meeting. On the Normandy 4 format, I believe, as I always did, that any meeting uh, at that level needs to yield specific results. And we also need to uh, fall through on, uh, follow up on what we uh, achieved uh, and agreed uh, last time. In 2016, uh, we made a compromise, so uh, we agreed to a change uh, of uh, the law on the uh, special status for uh, Donbass. Mr. Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine, insisted that this modification should be made to the implementation of the law. And uh, Mr. Scheinmeier, the former uh, Foreign Minister of Germany, said, OK, let's have a compromise solution. We agreed to that compromise so that the law on the special status of Donbass uh, would be implemented on a temporary basis on the day of election and on the permanent basis following the uh, vote uh, analysis and after the election results are confirmed by, OSC, by the OSC. Okay, let's do it. It needs to be done. It applies to other issues uh, too. Take amnesty and other issues. There are several issues where we need to agree on. We need to discuss this uh, agenda today. There is no alternative to the Normandy 4 format, and we will definitely support it. Bonjour, uh, Laurence Benamou, Agence France Presse. J'ai une question pour uh, chacun de France Press Agency, uh, I have a question uh, for each of you, Mr. President, Mr. Putin. Do you see France as a more solid partner than uh, in the previous five year mandate? And do you think? that you can work with the friends of Mr. Macron and the membership in the grade 8 club. Do, do you miss it? Do you want to get back to the G8? And Mr. Macron, you're getting closer to with Russia, Mr. Putin's Russia. While uh, Mr. Putin doesn't really share your hopes for a liberal democracy. While at the eastern part of Ukraine, the crisis is becoming deeper and deeper. All the while, there is a real humanitarian disaster that is going on there. So, what could France achieve from behavior like this? Now, on the importance of France uh, to Russia. France, historically, has been one of our key partners in Europe and around the world. We were the allies uh, in the war against Nazi Germany in World War II, and uh, next year 
The French president will come to the celebrations. Uh, I would like to thank him for accepting the invitation. But our relationship with France has far deeper roots. France is also a permanent member of the UN Security Council. It uh, has a nuclear arsenal. And it uh, does play a very important role in international affairs. And the relationship between Russia and the EU, to a large extent, depend on that. We know what is the decision-making process there, but France's support on many issues, particularly on the return of Russia to the Council of Europe, has played a role, and a major role, perhaps even a critical role in that. So I don't think we need uh, any additional evidence that we value our uh, cooperation with France. And again, talk about the economy. 500 companies from France operate uh, in Russia. I'd like to assure you that their presence creates uh, a lot of jobs uh, in France, because uh, French uh, businessmen supply a lot of goods to Russia, we support business activities here, but we could have done even more if we, could, if we normalize the relationship between uh, Russia and the EU. So I will answer your question. First of all, we have real results so we are moving forward it doesn't mean that we don't have any point that we argue about and reminded about certain issues that i'm really concerned about and i've told you that the situation in syria and in lip is one of the things that concerned me and what happened two years ago we in france we started a forum to discuss to have a dialogue so that we could to achieve more that would help us to achieve more in the humanitarian area than we could have two years ago as for ukraine the same thing there we are resolving a number of difficult issues there as for economical area that mr putin reminded about our current relations and current ties we have uh, large-scale projects in different areas and we keep moving forward and uh, france is really valued there so there are a lot of issues economical issues and political matters that help us to move forward because we are investing in these bilateral relations mute it doesn't mean that we have all problems solved. And the second example, I could ask you a question. What would have happened if we did it differently? If we're talking about geopolitical you know, issues, for example, if we told ourselves we don't agree with Russia on a number of issues, so we're going to turn our back to them and we're going to look the other way. So would it have really uh, be good for France? I'm convinced that it wouldn't be. And I'm really positive that even if we have certain things that we don't agree upon, we still need to do everything we can to reanimate, or resuscitate the relations between Russia and Europe, because that's its destiny. If we just kept the things as they were in the Council of Europe, the way it looked a number of months ago, what would have happened? Russia would just slam the door and left. And for all the Russian citizens who could go to the European court, to the civil liberties court, they would have been refused because they wouldn't have the right to do that. So the things uh, we're talking about European values, we're talking about protecting these European rights. So everyone who said that we don't need this, that is not giving us any good it's not doing us any good so they are not these people they are not thinking that we need to push this great power this great country that Russia is in this new geopolitical conditions we should push it forward because otherwise it wouldn't have responded to our interests. We are two nuclear powers. We are two constant members of the Security Council. And we should have a dialogue, even though we don't agree upon everything. We still should work together. So I'd like to remind you uh, one more time what Mr. Putin said about the liberal democracy. 
You know, sometimes when you talk about liberal things, the meaning could be varying. There is a political liberalism. And that's what is bringing us to Europe or the Reformation period. Maybe I don't remember my history that well. Maybe I forgot about those special ties that were supported by Catherine the Great with our philosophers, with our writers, with our great figures of that period of Renaissance. Uh, there is a political liberalism in Russia, there is economical liberalism in Russia. It's just that every community, every society is going through changes. It's evolving and in every society there is a certain level of conservatism attached to it. So this notion, they must be discussed, they must be made clear. And I think that at the level of our society. This two-year period is nothing. You were talking about this scale. That's why I think that today we need to apply new efforts so that we could build the new architecture of European security together for our countries. We're going to talk about climactic agenda. It all means that our two countries are big powers. Our two countries are the countries with the strong economical ties. We also have common ideals that we share. And that's why our soldiers, our servicemen, a number of times throughout the history, they fought together on one side. That's why I think that we should continue this dialogue, our dialogue. Of course, maybe today we will not be able to resolve all or our problems, but still, Russia has always had a special relations with the Western world. It's part of the Russian soul. But I think that Europe is not Western world. We are part of the Western world. And Europe should reconsider the concept of its sovereignty. It has its allies. And in the world, what we see in this world today, that's the world where the Western hegemony is put under question and Europe needs to play its part. So that's why the dialogue between Europe and Russia is a necessary thing so that European Union could uh, have its weight again, could play a substantial part in the world today. So we all need this. Of course, we can't resolve everything uh, in one day, but we're going to work on it in the future. Uh, for the G7. You're present for the G7. Now on G7. Well, there is no G7. How can we go back to an organization that doesn't exist? I mean, today is G7, but we cannot go back to G8 because G8 doesn't exist. There's no G8. As for G8, well, we never say no. It was Russia's turn to host G8, and our partners didn't come. Well, they are welcome. Anytime, please. They can come even as G7, but there are other organizations and in international institutions that play a significant role in international affairs. Take G20, and you have big economic powerhouses like China, India, and many others. You know those 20 countries? They account for almost 90% of the global economy. So, we really value these uh, 
full uh, format uh, uh, platforms and that's where we actively cooperate that we also take part uh, in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization BRICS uh, and other multilateral fora BRICS uh, cooperates uh, Brazil South Africa China India and Russia any contacts with our partners uh, in any format are useful so we never say no. And again, I'd like to uh, say a few words on what uh, the French president talked about. Climate change. This is something important. From the very first steps, uh, we supported uh, the uh, French president's initiative. We supported uh, the uh, Paris climate deal, and uh, our commitment is to reach 70%, 75% of the 1990 emissions uh, and 75. Uh, this is a serious commitment. The entire Russian economy will have to transform. We have uh, adopted many state programs and allocated uh, serious funding for that. This is something critical for us. It is of paramount importance for Russia. President Macron mentioned uh, the fires, wildfires in uh, Siberia. We raised that issue when we were in Osaka. We are seeing record temperature hikes in the Arctic, uh, unprecedented uh, temperature changes, and we need to coordinate our efforts. Without coordination, we all know that, we won't be able to achieve a sufficient, uh, an effective result, and we are ready to work together. <coughs> Mr. Macron was talking about Europe from Lisbon to Vladivostok, but I think you would agree that the relations between Russia and European Union are at the low point now. So, how do you evaluate the future I mean, with the change of the European Commission uh, when the members will change? So, will it help to change the situation? Will it help to bring Russia to the pace and to improve the situation and relations between Russia and European Union. So, and as for G7, are going to discuss bringing it back to G8, uh, this dialogue that you're going to have today? Now, on uh, your question on Lisbon, from Lisbon to uh, Vladivostok. It's not our idea. General de Gaulle mentioned that. He was the first to raise that. He said we need to have a, a single space from Lisbon to the Urals, but we need to extend it to the uh, uh, Pacific Ocean. This is one culture of... Uh, this is one space uh, united by one culture. It now seems impossible, but what seems impossible today could be quite possible tomorrow. We need to set goals like that. And these are strategic goals. They are critically important, including for Europe if it wants to remain the center of civilization, and for Russia. And if we work together, then sooner or later, we will finally achieve that goal in one way or another. It's important to, to focus on something, choose a path and make the right steps uh, along that path, given the realities of today. As for G7 or G8, it's not a goal in itself. We just don't say no to any contacts. As for your question regarding the relations and despite the sanctions that Mr. Putin has talked about, because so there is still cooperation in different areas, and we managed to strengthen our economical and cultural ties, uh, today the relations between Russia and European Union is an irritant in a way, and the main irritant in this relation is the situation in Ukraine. Resolving this conflict is uh, a magical wand that is going to open the door for Russia to go back to the Great Seven Club, to make it Great Eight again. 
And I think it's uh, going to be good for all the parties to find the resolution for this situation. As for our bilateral dialogue, it shows that even if we can't really solve all the things that we don't agree upon, we still can build something new. It's pretty obvious that bringing back, coming back to the normal relations, to the G8 format, to the normal relations with the European Union, to make it all happen, we need to resolve the crisis in Ukraine. But as I've already said, we need to make all the players act to work on it. We need to go out of this temporary problems that the parties have to develop the new architecture. That's what we are working upon now. So this G8 question depends on the Ukrainian crisis. But on the other hand, I would like to to make a part of this new agenda, to make us work together. I want to make it happen, to work on the architecture of security and of mutual trust. So I want really to make it happen, to discuss all the lack of understanding, misunderstanding with each other. So we need to work in it. We need to develop new formats, new platforms. We don't have to live with the same formats and speak with the same language that we used decades ago, because the world is changing constantly, the time is moving on, and we should reconsider things, and we should rebuild things. Talking about the relations between Russia and the European Union, I would like to see these relations not as something normal, not to just normalize them. I want them to be reconsidered. And the last question, please. The question to both presidents. Recently, during the peaceful demonstrations in Moscow, a lot of people were arrested. Mr. Putin, how would you explain? And Mr. Macron, what do you think? about it. And recently, their uh, nuclear incident has happened in Siberia. They are talking about the high level of radiation in the air. So what was has been tested recently and what new discoveries by scientists were made? Well, let's uh, have a geography lesson. There were no incidents in Siberia. We did have an incident in uh, the uh, north, uh, and uh, you know there's been not an in, there's not been an increase in radioactivity. We send independent inspectors there that control the situation right now. They monitor the situation. I'm receiving those reports. Uh, I'm getting reports from civilian and military experts, so we are not seeing any serious changes. But we are taking preventive measures so that there are no surprises. Unfortunately, there have been casualties uh, and there were people who were uh, injured and so they will receive awards. Uh, they were doing a very important job. As for the... Uh, as for... Uh, street riots. Uh, September will see uh, regional elections uh, to local legislatures, particularly in Moscow. 111 people were not uh, were denied registration due to certain violations. That was last time. This year, only 57 people were denied registration for uh, obvious violations. Some of the signatures were falsified, were faked, according to the experts uh, of the uh, Central Election Committee. We do have uh, legal ways to resolve these issues, but these are courts, and we had uh, unregistered candidates who had the court on their side. The court upheld their right to be registered. There was a decision made in favor of one person, at least one person, to get that person registered. As for the uh, 
mass uh, protests. I don't think that I'm going to say anything new, anything that you don't know. Uh, our people have the right to uh, voice their protest and the authorities need to uh, make sure that the citizens can voice their uh, can voice their statements but uh, no one should uh, they shouldn't lead it to a situation where there would be clashes and in case uh, anyone say uh, in charge of the violations uh, then they have to be brought to justice under russian law but that's Russia is not the only exception. I'm a guest, but I'm forced to mention that, since you're asking that. What about the yellow vests? According to our estimates, 11 people died during those pro protests. About 2,000 people and uh, 200 policemen were injured. We don't want such events to take place in the uh, Russian capital and we will make whatever we can to make sure that our political developments take place within law. So when um, the president is right, like remind you about the situation, but we should really still look differently at what is happening in our countries because both our countries uh, witnessing certain protests and demonstrations and rallies. But an important thing, when you ratify certain agreements, you need to fulfill its demands, its clauses. And Russia has ratified a number of international agreements and conventions. And under which the country must give its citizens uh, certain liberties, freedom of speech, freedom of uh, rallies, and so on and so forth. And that's why a lot of people were concerned with what was uh, going on in Moscow, with the errors that were made with all the uh, blocks that were made by the Police. Mr. President said that there were protests in France as well. That's true. And citizens were injured and uh, police officers were injured and I'm really concerned about this too. But France has always uh, fulfilled, not just done what was written in the Constitution, but also all the rights that it must fulfill under the Council of Europe demands. So all the people who went to the European Court, of course, they will be heard, they will be listened to. Of course, we must make it happen so that each citizen had a chance to express his or her opinion. But you know that all those people who wanted to to become candidates uh, during the European election, they didn't manage to do it. They could do it freely, they could do it with any uh, borders, with any limitations, with any obstacles. So, of course, if uh, people they disrupt civil order, we really can't make it happen because they are getting in the way of other citizens. So, of course, we can't accept that. We can't accept the situation when certain citizens see their rights violated by the police. That's why we can't accept. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about altogether. Because it's important, it's a necessary thing for its citizens following the rules, following the rules to be a part of the protests. That's exactly what we're doing. We did it twice, both in July and in August. We had uh, mass demonstrations held by those people who were willing to voice the protest in a way. They uh, filed uh, applications. They were authorized by the authorities they were peaceful and uh, there have been no in there were no incidents and i hope that it would happen the same way in france and in other countries we don't want any incidents and no violations of the existing legislation
So that's it. Thank you very much. Now we are going uh, to start our work. Thank you.